Good morning above our church. I'm John and welcome to today's Sharing Hope devotion. You know, I love the fact that we call these devotions Sharing Hope because there are days for all of us that are a lot like today's psalm. Psalm 6. Days when we need a real hope. Psalm 6 is the first of seven penitential psalms. Songs of confession and humility. King David now turns the magnifying glass onto his own life and as we see verse 6 and 7 is reduced to a groaning, weeping wretch. After such a dark night of despair, can the morning bring new hope? We don't know what incident caused David to write this song, but we do know in verse 1 that he felt rebuked in God's anger and disciplined in God's wrath. God uses our conscience and our feelings to drive us to cry out to him. A long time ago, as a new Christian at university, I saw so many things in my life start to change. And very soon people and family started to ask me, Wow, what's happened to you? You're so different. It felt like God had got hold of my heart and nothing would be the same again. I remember so clearly the night when everything fell apart. How could I do that again? How could I return to the same sin? The sin was something that hadn't particularly bothered me before I was a Christian, but now it came back to sting me again. And the sting was painful. If I'd gone to talk to a non-Christian at the time, then I'm quite sure that they would have been sympathetic, but also dismissive and said, oh, don't worry, everyone does it, it doesn't hurt anyone. But there are times when all of us need the rebuke and discipline of God. As Hebrews 12 verse 7 reminds us, God's discipline is a sign that we have a heavenly father and he's disciplining us as his children. The writer Spurgeon comments that however painful the chastisement is, it is sweetened by the consciousness that it's not in anger, but in his dear covenant love. When I first read this psalm, the verses that jumped out at me were verses 2 to 6. I didn't think about David. I thought about Jesus praying in the Garden of Gethsemane and then there on the cross. Lord, my bones are in agony. My soul is in deep anguish. How long, Lord? How long? Turn, Lord, and deliver me. Save me because of your unfailing love. Whilst David prayed and flooded his bed with tears, he did not know that one day, just outside the city of David, on the Mount of Olives, there would be one who would cry out for the cup of God's wrath to be removed from him, but who still chose to submit to his Father's will, out of obedience and love for us, whose body and bones were in agony, whose soul cried out in anguish, My God, my God! Why have you forsaken me? As he hung there on the cross. The one mocked with the words, If you're the son of God, save yourself. But he chose not to be delivered himself. And through his death, he took the full force of God's wrath and anger against sin and delivered us safe and sound from it. Whilst David couldn't see what God was going to do, we do see in verse 9, that he had complete confidence in God's mercy. And we now see God's mercy fully revealed in Jesus' death on the cross. When God rebukes us and disciplines us, it's not in anger because Jesus took that, but because he loves us. We belong to him and he wants the best for us. To finish my uni story, I went out, poured out tears, words, emotions in one huge torrent to a Christian friend. They listened patiently. And then they simply reminded me of 1 John 1 verse 7, that the blood of Christ cleanses me from all sin. And then they told me to go and repeat everything I told them to God. Can I encourage you to be quick to pour everything out to God? Some people just pray. Others may find it helpful like David to write things out to grapple with and make sense of things in the light of God and his mercy. Whatever way we do it, let's come to him. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you. 
we all so easily fall into doing the same things wrong. We all need your rebuke and discipline, but thank you that you are working for our good. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you took the anger against our sin on yourself on the cross. Thank you now, Heavenly Father, that by grace and your mercy, we are forgiven as your sons and daughters. Help us not to try and run and hide from you, but run to your open arms. Thank you, our Abba Father. Amen. <laughs>